Hi, I'm Sabine Modestin, and I am the creator of 13 Witches. The beginning of the story goes back a long time ago, maybe five years, four or five years ago. I did an, I did an, um, an audition for a show, an American show. So in my head, I knew that was my role, and I was so excited. But you know what happened? I didn't get the role. I was a little bit sad about it, but what I decided to do for fun at the beginning is to do a little video to put it on YouTube. And we did two versions of it. One was in French called La Reine Vaudou, and the other one was in English, The Voodoo Queen. Both of the video became crazy. Like the reaction, people were sending me message. They wanted to exercise me. Some of them, were asking me to not take their soul. And French was, they were talking to me about Jesus. And and I was always replying, hey, I'm an actress. It's, I'm just an actress, I'm just an actress. And I was getting really pissed. But then I said, hmm, there's something here. Maybe if I create a show where I will be a witch, maybe I will be very successful since people already think that I am a witch. So I, wore, I wrote, uh, 13 Witches based on the success of how good I was as a witch. And uh, for the one who watched the show, see how I can be very mean and I can look very, very scary sometimes. <laughs> and at the same time, something sad happened in my life. Uh, something that really, uh, really touched me. And I had two choices. Maybe stay at home, cry, depress, whatever, or just do something and just do something to forget about that little sad thing that happens to me. So I went ahead and worked hard to make it as, to make a show from the script that I wrote. And because my co-producer Steve already had all those equipment, why not? So 13 Witches was really crazy high moment and crazy down moment. It was really about creating something with no money. And my head, I wanted 13 Witches to be different. Different than all the web series we see on the web. I wanted something that people see and react. Good or bad, but react. And I think I succeed. <laughs> um, first of all, the main important thing for me was to create a wardrobe that people will remember. I wanted to create the medieval time to make it very medieval and a perfect world. The medieval time would have been like the Lord of the Rings style and a perfect world. And in a perfect world, the fantasy time, the time when they come back will be like underworld. But you know, with no budget, you do what you, what you can't with what you have. So I bought few pieces here and there put it together and create a medieval time. And for the, the fantasy time, when they, co when they come back, I decided to go full dominatrix style to make sure that we see the difference, but also to make sure that we see the witches that now are, are very powerful and ready to dominate the world and enslave the world. So the best way to really show that, that domination was to put it on the clothing. So half of the cast were already cast in my head. The other half, we did some casting where you can see the behind the scene if you go on, on YouTube, a little video about it. Um, it. There's 38 actors and 13 witches. Most of them are women. I wanted to create something with women in it because there's so many, I don't know, I just wanted to do that. Um, so it was an amazing adventure to work with women and it was an interesting adventure to work with women. I don't want to go through the detail, but uh, women can be very mean or women can be very helpful. And I had both. It's great, you know? It gives you a little lesson, you know? But at the same time, men sometimes can also be hard to work with. And in the crew, I had men that I worked with who it was a little bit hard. I'm happy that they did work, they did give their talent to create a show. And I will be forever grateful for that. Like I said, Tiji Witches was a no budget. So it wasn't perfectly shoot. We didn't have the budget. We didn't have the equipment. Most of the 
I, the people who helped were a friend that I had here and there. I had few people who knew a little bit about the business, but we did what we can. Um, and it was funny because Steve did the editing and sometime some of the things were so hard to edit. I was very grateful for the one, the person who shoot it, but sometimes there were amazing thing in it that we had to cover. <laughs> but you know what? This is the passion of low budget production. <laughs> this is the fun thing that you have to deal with. I always made sure that all the actors were fed, but it was, it was interesting. One of the reasons why 13 Witches were so successful, it was marketing. And this is something that people forget. They create a web series, they put it on the web, and they hope that everybody's going to rush in and watch it. No, no, no. It doesn't work this way anymore because there are so many web series, there's so many things on the web. I decided to create a marketing plan for 13 Witches. You know when you're going to start shooting, you have to start the marketing. And that's what we did with 13 Witches. And uh, as you can see, if you just Google 13 Witches, you see uh, how successful the marketing was. Because you create excitement. It's important to get your fan excited about your project the same way that you are excited about your project. What I did, I used my own fan base. I already had, before 13 Witches, I had a very nice fan base, which I am very grateful for. We made sure that people knew there was something amazing coming up. Make sure you watch it. And all the behind the scenes, when we were posting the behind the scene, I don't know how many messages I received asking when it's coming, when, when, when. That's the thing. You got to want, you got to make people want to watch your show. You know, you got to make sure that there is a connection with your fan. That's why I'm doing this video to have the connection with you guys. And also to thank you for watching this amazing show, but there's more to come. I had to ha do my everyday job while we were shooting. So my week was pretty much like that. From Monday, Monday I was working and the night I was doing the call sheet, uh, making sure I have the location, uh, doing all the call sheets, calling all the, the actors to make sure that they are available, um, asking questions through Facebook, uh, checking if I have enough of uh, the wardrobe. So from Monday to Friday, that was the job. And at the same time, I was pretty much working every day and very long hours and the job i was doing was i had to use my brain a lot so i wasn't sleeping in the night and working in the day so my i was sleeping probably three hours per week that was pretty much bad and the day before we were shooting i wasn't sleeping at all to make sure that everything was ready but on the day of the shooting i was so tired that sometime i have to say that i was seeing things that wasn't there i was pretty much I was high without even taking any drug. It's that crazy. And at the same time, I was taking care of all the creation, all the organization, and Steve, the co-producer, was taking care of all the equipment and everything. And sometimes we didn't have the right equipment, so Steve had to find a way to be very creative with how we're gonna do it, how we're gonna shoot this piece, how we're gonna, you know? So that's pretty much how we did it. And because you wanna create that little, I wanted to create that little, um, I don't know, that little chemistry between the actors. They need to knew that they were doing something exciting to get them excited about the project. So we did some real so we did a photo shoot. As you can see, if you go on the Facebook fan page, you'll see we did a lot of posters with their name to make sure that, to make sure that they are stars. And that's what I wanted them to feel, feel like stars. That's why we created posters for every actors. That's why we were shooting and we would make sure that there was pictures of them all over the web. I wanted them to be on my show and being my show means being a star. And that's really what I wanted to. So the first day we launched the show, I think we launched the show May 6th, one year after we started the real song. We created a big, 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 uh, buzz around it to make sure that people know the show they were waiting for one year is coming up let's go let's go watch it but again it was another everyday job every time we were um launching an episode 
we had to create a big crazy marketing campaign behind every episode there is 18 ep 18 18 episode 18 marketing plan 18 crazy it was like we had no life for pretty much three years with 13 witches three years of no life but we were happy about it because we wanted to do it people had a reaction to it but that was my plan i wanted people to react good or bad but i wanted reaction and that's what happened uh the fact that the women were very very dominatrix there's a there were a lot of insult uh, I received lots of message of insult, people who didn't like the fact that the women were strong. And also I received a lot of amazing message where men and women loved the fact that women were powerful, very powerful on the show. But I didn't want to create a show about men there and women there. I just wanted to create a show about those women who were in love and we're in the period of time where women were treated as witches if they were different. 13 Witches, it's a trilogy. So what you saw was the first, the first part of three script. That's why there's a lot of question. That's why there's a lot of uh, thing that I didn't answer in the first script. And there is the second part and the third part. 13 Witches originally was written as a web series. It was written as a movie but we released it as a web series. With the success of it, and with a lot of feedback from people from LA, we realized that it's better to make it as a movie. So the second part and the third time will be as a movie. And we also repackaged the, the, the web series and made it as a movie as well. Just see what we've done with no budget. Imagine what we can do with a lot of budget. That's pretty much a future of 13 Witches. Now the future of My Destiny production. Uh, we right now have uh, three projects, two, sh two short for festivals and one feature movie. So we have lots of projects going on. Uh, I'm a writer. I will never stop writing. So I have so many scripts that I wrote. That's what I do as a hobby. When I have nothing to do, when I'm bored, I write and I write stories. And this is something that I started to do when I was, I don't even know, oh my God, when I was five years old, maybe, because I, I wasn't watching TV. So we have all those scripts that we want to produce. Some of them are very fantasy-like, because I love writing fantasy stories, but some of them are dramas, comedy. And the future of my Destiny production, it's pretty much to produce all those wonderful stories that we have, but also to collaborate with other amazing filmmakers or investors who believe in our project. So it's pretty much acting, singing, writing, uh, creating. I'm a performer. Even though I love to create and to write, I'm also a performer. Being on stage, it's, it's, it's a drug. It's a drug. And the future for me, it's really to perform more, to be able to, in every, every way. One of the funniest moment and 13 witches was a day. <laughs> I was so tired because I didn't sleep for, I don't know, God, at that point, I think I didn't sleep for the week and because I was working uh, six days a week and that day we were shooting, I think it was a Sunday. And that day I was directing the scene, but I was tired and I was pretty much falling asleep. People were asking me questions I couldn't understand. And since French is my first language, I couldn't speak in English. That was done for me. And, uh, and I was seeing things. I'm not even joking. I was seeing everything moving. People were talking to me and I felt their face were just moving in front of me. And I was, I was laughing. I was smiling like crazy, but for real, I was on drug. I was so tired that I felt that I was on drug. So that was a very funny moment because I, I had to hide it. You know, you need to look very professional and you know what you're doing. But at that point, I was I was dumb. <laughs> that was one of one of the good moments. I have other ones, you know, like <laughs> few moments where uh, especially the wardrobe, you know, you were putting the wardrobe on the actresses and it was fun to see the crew trying not to look at them. It was so funny. Yeah, that was a good moment. <laughs> uh, the 
this is something a little bit delicate to say, but I don't know. Uh, the cast for the next movie, for sure there's other character that comes in the next movie. I have to say there's there's few more characters and there's few more characters that leaves that not that, that are not coming back for the next movie. It will be fun. It will be amazing to have the name actors in the second movies and the second and the third movie. All the witches have their own personality. I'm just going to talk a few of them because there's 13, so it's a bit too much. But I'm going to talk the one that we see a little bit more in the first movie. Uh, for sure, there is uh, Andromeda. Andromeda is played by Victoria Weiss. Uh, she's a character that is very... I wanted her to be very sexy, but with a little pain inside. And you can tell when she say, when when she explained her story to Diana and she said the sadness and what she went through and what she is now. I wanted the viewer to feel her pain and to understand why she decided to give up. She is uh, the closest one to Nemesis because she's, she's one of, I don't want to say too much because there's a lot of, of that in the second movie but she's one of the closest one of 13 which is uh, of, of a nemesis and she is andromeda one of the character that really understand the pain of a uh, nemesis atina atina is played by mary west i wrote this character because i wanted someone that is very um that knows how to fight and that can fight but and the someone that that is that you can't control exactly. I wanted Atina to be the girl that you can't control, the one that will never, never accept any reality just like that because it's like that. The one who will always ask question before she do anything. And and I wanted someone with a strong, strong personality which Marie is. Atina is the one that is very challenging for a nemesis. Asmodeus. Asmodeus, I wrote the character of Asmodeus for Steve Laro, who is also the co-producer of 13 Witches. I wanted someone who's in love with Nemesis. And it's funny because it's not the real story in the real life, but he's in love with Nemesis and uh, he knows that he will never have her. It's a point, he will never have her. But he knows that with the right way, he can control her. And that's what he want, he want to control her. He want to give her the power that she need, but he needs to control her. And uh, and you can see by different scene, the eyes, the way he looks at her. He knows he will never get her, but he, he likes to believe that he has her because he controls her. As for An Anubis, which is uh, the, the slave of Asmodeus, it's funny because I wrote Anubis for Edwin Rodriguez, which is played, who plays the role. I saw him in that character. I wanted someone with a pain, a pain in the eyes, and uh, who's very, who can look very submissive, but also is not submissive. And I don't see Edwin is not like that, but that's what I saw when I saw him. I saw that he will be able to play that pain, especially when uh, Atina wakes up and he looks at her. And when we were editing um, this episode, I said, I said to Steve, I said, I want this pain. I want people to see when she opened her eyes, how Edwin looks at her with these eyes with, I wish, I wish we were together. Well, I didn't wrote the role of Christian for anybody. I didn't know who would be the best fit and my friend to play this role. So really I did a casting. I, there was one actor who had that role, but couldn't do it for a sad reason. So I had to replace him last minute. I replaced him with one actor. This actor couldn't do the role. I replaced him with another actor. Couldn't find the right one. Then last minute, Clayton came aboard. And I was very, very pleased with him. He's really good. He's a very good actor. With Clayton, his character is very, very interesting. And uh, when I wrote this character, I was very happy with my creation. Clayton is a, 
a, a Christian is a character who, who was in love with Nemesis. He felt so bad about, about those feelings that he had. And when he met Nemesis, he, loved, he was in love. But you know what's the opposite of love? Hate. So he hated her so much. He hated her so much. And he hated himself for loving her. And she was in love too. But Nemesis in the past was very, very shy. She will never approach a guy. She will never talk to anybody. So she, he was mad that the fact that he was in love with her, but she wasn't talking to him. And she dis he decided to... To create a war with this family of women and uh, I can't say too much because this the what it did it's explained more in the second movie but he decided to make sure that she will die when they come back they, uh, the nemesis one of her plan was to kill Christian and to keep him as you can see she still had some feelings for him even though when even when she kill him you can see in her eyes when she approached, when he said, Nemesis, you know, I still love you. And you see her eyes. You see, oh, God, she loves him. And I don't want to say too much, but Nemesis is not, it's not Nemesis anymore. She has something else. She's, she's stronger, but she's also more mean. She's more mean than any other of the sister. So she, so she kill him and decide to kill Christian, to keep Christian as a slave, a sex slave, but a slave. So, Nemesis, played by me. When I wrote Nemesis, I, I wanted the viewer to see the pain, the see, to see the fight between uh, the pain and staying strong, the strong woman who still have a heart. I wanted people to see the two sides of Nemesis. So as you can see, when you watch the story, Nemesis in the medieval time was very shy, very and to herself and very uh, she was she wasn't comfortable with her with her um, her sisters when she comes back she's pretty much the leader she leads all those women and the revenge and she did something very very intense which is giving her soul to the devil to realize this vengeance so um I wrote the character of Nemesis as a, someone who wants to lead, someone who's ready to, to revenge. And then if, if you read what's the meaning of Nemesis, it's the goddess of the revenge. So she's the goddess of revenge. So that's what I wanted. I wanted to, put, to show that goddess of the revenge. As an actress, the way I, I approached that, and also because I'm also the writer, the way... I wanted to show that is, uh, first of all, to play those scenes and uh, when I was um, in the medieval time, when I was very shy and everything, was very easy because when I was younger, I was very, very shy. This is something that I just say to you. And it was really hard for me to talk to people. When I was at school, I was always on in the corner. I couldn't even look at other people. The only time I was happy it was when I was in front, on, when I was on stage. When I was on stage, it was, oh, it was amazing. And I'm still like that, so it never changed. So I used this old, old Sabine, and I put it into the Sabine and the nemesis of the medieval time. As for um, when I was talking about my mother, what I do, when I, I talked to Diana and I explained what I had to do to bring them back, blah, blah, blah. And my, my mother passed away. And when I wrote this dialogue, when I said the last thing I saw was my mother used to be very strong. It's true. The last time I saw my mother was, was that strong woman who, were, who was very, very, very weak. So... The crying you see in that scene, it's a real crying, trust me. And it was it was hard to shoot because that scene, that day of shooting was one of the very, very intense one. And it was hard for me to stay focused and shooting something, play with this emotion because it was hard because it was real emotion. I was crying for my mother who passed away of cancer. And... Uh, 
and you know cancer can make a woman look very weak so and the and the and the and the scene you see me crying but i was actually very crying and uh and another scene is when i i go see asmodeus and i ask him to kill me i don't ask him to kill me but i ask him to protect me and to how and the emotion that i used the way i approached this character it's it was it was very emotional because i was thinking of my mother what if it was possible to bring her back? Would I do it? I was directing that scene. And uh, I had to think about my, my dialogue. and But at the same time, I had to deal with this emotion. And it was a very intense day. Like I said, that day we shoot this scene, but we also shoot other scenes where it was less emotional. And usually as an actor, when you do some, uh, for me, whatever, I'm, I don't talk for other actors, but for me, when I do something emotional, I do it and then I just change, I just go to another another space and I, I change my emotion and then I can do another scene. You know, I don't bring this emotion with me all day because it will, it will be too hard for me. But, and that, that day, the day that I was shooting the scene with um, Steve Laho, who plays um, Asmodeus, was very hard because I was too in it. And even though I went, changed, I went to another place and I was trying to let go of this emotion. It was still there, uh, but I still had to be functional and create something. So as, a, as, an, as an actor, it was, it was a little bit hard to do this part. The part of of uh, being very dominant was easy. This is something that I have no problem. Being a bad girl, it's so easy for me. I have no idea. Being that strong, mean girl, be, you know. So it was very easy. It was fun too. As for Bionia, played by Jennifer Coining, I wrote the character of Abionia. Uh, really based on my mother. My mother, my own mother, Marie Madeleine Dassas, was a very, very strong woman. Like you have no idea. She was a businesswoman. She, she ran different businesses. She was, she was amazing. She was fun. She was different. And I wrote this character based on her. But I needed someone who can play the role, well. So. I did a casting call for her. I couldn't find the right one until I met Jennifer and I was really amazed with her uh, in the audition. So we brought her along and uh, she did an amazing job as you can tell, as you can see. <laughs> Another funny thing about 13 Witches is Mary West was pregnant. Mary West who played Athena. What a challenge. It was very, very challenging to make sure that the viewer don't see that because it will not work with the storyline. But I really, like I said, I really wanted Marie and I was ready to do whatever it takes, you know? And, um, but we had to hide it. And it was fun, very fun. And the editing, because we had some scenes where we were like, okay, that's the one, but we see her belly, you know? So it was, it, it was something. And so the baby was in her belly from, the time we start shooting to the last day we start shooting, it was amazing. And she's such a beautiful girl. Oh my God. I have to say that I really enjoyed producing 13 Witches. And I know that producing is really something that I enjoy and I love it. Directing, I love it. But I think every director will tell you it is challenging. It is challenging to, to be a director. What did I learn? by 13 witches oh god i learned a lot first of all it's fun to work with your friend but you gotta make sure that that it, it stays professional um business and friendship it's hard you gotta know it you gotta know it's something it's like that you know um a good friend can be amazing when you don't work with them, when you don't try to create a project with them. But when you do it with your friend, it's harder. So casting is important. Um, 
I don't say that I will never work with my friend again, but I'll be more careful. This is one thing that I learned, to be careful. And uh, you know what? You got to learn it. It's not something that someone can tell you. Once in a while, for sure, I did find people that I loved working with, and it was amazing, and it was a great experience, who helped me a lot, who were there for me. But some people, it was a bit harder. 13 Witches was a project of passion, but I learned that you should not love your project so much sometimes. You know, you got to be more flexible. And because 13 Witches was a project of passion, maybe I wasn't that flexible, so... You gotta be more flexible. So loving your project, it's it's great, but it can be your baby, which with 13 Witches was my baby. Now you gotta be more open. I also learned that you can't do all the job by yourself. I had Steve, yes, but there's a lot of things that you can't do all by yourself. You get burned. You hate it so much. I have to say there was times that even saying the word, the word 13 witches, I was, I was getting sick of it. And it's not a good thing. You can become sick of your own project. When you work with someone and it doesn't work, stop working with that person. That's it. Don't try to find a, a way to fix things. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Nothing personal, not against you, not against the person. Don't work with that person, especially when it's a project uh, that you really are passionate about. But I really, really want to thank a lot of people. First of all, I want to thank all those actors. They were amazing. You know, they were there for me. They work. They did what I have to do. So I really want to thank the actors and the crew who helped me. Crew that, you know, they, they were there when I needed. You know, sometimes there was no crew, but when they were there, they were there. I really want to thank also the fan. Oh, my God. The support that 13 Witches got. The reaction, good or bad. I don't care. I just, I'm just happy that people react to 13 Witches. And I am happy about all the comments. I don't care. You think you hurt me when you hate me? Uh-uh. It makes me happy, <laughs> you know, because you react. And that was, that was amazing. I also really want to thank all those people who start stealing the videos of 13 Witches and sharing it everywhere. Thank you. Thank you so much. Every time I Google 13 Witches, there's a new result. There's a new place where 13 witches is in different language that I don't even speak and I really want to thank the fan for that. Please keep doing it. It's amazing. And I really want to thank everybody who's listening to this video at this moment. And I want to thank everybody who who follow my career since the beginning. The fan that I had before 13 witches who stayed with me watch 13 Witches, comment on it, sharing the videos, helping me with the marketing. Thank you. Thank you so much for have everybody who really did help with the marketing, sharing the video. Thank you. I am very excited for my next projects that are not from 13 Witches. I'm very excited for that, but I am excited for what's coming for 13 Witches. Like I said, I can't say everything that's coming right now, but there's a lot of things coming. There's a lot of people that are interested by 13 Witches in a way which I wasn't even dreaming. So thank you for watching and see you next time.